praise a great and mighty God. Hallelujah. You may be seated tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, give me this mountain. Say it like you mean it. Give me this mountain. I began to look at a, a song that I remembered many, many years ago called The Rough Side of the Mountain. Verse 1 says, Oh, Lord, I'm striving, trying to make it through this barren land. But as I go from day to day, I can hear my Savior say, Trust me, child, come on and hold my hand. Because I'm coming up, Lord, although my burdens sometimes they press me down. But if I can only keep this faith, if I can only keep this faith, I'll have strength to just run this race. I'm looking for a heavenly crown. Anybody looking for that crown tonight? Sometimes you got to climb up the rough side of the mountain. There's another verse that says, This old race will soon be over. There'll be no more race for me to run. And I will stand before God's throne. All my heartaches will be gone. And I'll hear my Savior say, Welcome home. <laughs> and then I'll begin. I'm coming up. On the rough side of the mountain, Lord, I must hold to God his powerful hand. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. I'm doing my best to make it in. I'm telling you what, I'm going to claim that mountain. Give me that mountain tonight. Four score, Abraham Lincoln spoke these words at Gettysburg. He said, four score, don't worry, I'm getting to the Bible in just a minute, okay? Don't lose your religion. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great silver war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met Listen to me now. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of it as a final resting place for those who died here that the nation might live. This we may all in propriety do, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men living and dead, who struggled here, have hallowed it, far above our poor power to add or detract. He began on to speak to say, The world will little note, nor long remember that we say here, while it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, we here be, dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause. For, they which, for which they here gave the last full measure of devotion. That we were highly resolved these dead shall not have died in vain. That the nation, this nation shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. He made a proclamation. I want to tell someone tonight, give me this mountain. I'll get to the scripture in here in just a minute. Listen, mountains really are hard to climb. The religious imagination has known this for a long time. That's why mountains have come to symbolize the hardships and difficulties of life. Maybe mountains of trouble, mountains of problems you face, mountain of sickness that you have, mountains of pain, mountains of sorrow, mountains of debt in our society, mountains of strife. Listen to me now. Whether it be by the hymn writer, uh, M.E. Abbey Penning, life is like a mountain railroad. Or Maybe even the pen writing of Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell singing, Ain't no mountain high enough. Listen, mountains have always represented problems to be solved. 
obstacles to be overcome, crosses to be carried, burdens to be borne, troubles to be triumphed over, and difficulties to be dealt with. That's mountains of life. Give me this mountain. Listen, mountains are problems. Death is a mountain. Sickness is a mountain. Troubles is a mountain. Hardships is a mountain. Family crisis are mountains. Scott Peck in his book, The Road Less Traveled, is a great book, says life is just a problem. The truth of the matter is life is filled with mountains. But Jesus reminds us in Scripture that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will have to obey you. That's the power of the Word of God for the mountains in your life. Let's examine why. First, faith may not always change the outer circumstances of life that you're facing, but it always changes your outlook and how you see those mountains. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And frankly, that makes all the difference in the world when you read that scripture. It's not always what's on the outside, church, that matters, but what's on the inside looking out that really makes all the difference in the world. I want you to tell somebody, give me this mountain. Now, we're going to get there. You think about it. You probably remember the great story of Hannibal crossing the Alps. And in this little book, I remember the pictures of those elephants and all those donkeys and the army of Hannibal from Africa crossing the Alps into Italy. This was a great feat for our military conquest. In fact, it was one of the greatest acts of military courage in human history. In our child storybook, whether this is part of fact or fiction, I don't really know. But there was a story of, that went along with all those pictures. And according to the story in our child book, it said that Hannibal, when he got to the Alps, think about it. When he got to the Alps, was about to cross with his army when the army began to rebel. The soldiers saw these prodigious mountains before them, these huge mountains in front of them. They saw this incredible barrier in front of them. They were afraid to move. They were ready to turn around and go home because of these mountains. But according to the childhood storybook, Hannibal rallied his troops and his armies by standing before them, pointing toward the Alps and declaring, listen to this, declaring, forward march, we see no Alps. And with those words, the army of Hannibal went forth to conquer. Now life's obstacles may not always be easy. But sometimes you've got to go into life and just declare it. Maybe you've even had to declare it today. Forward march I, because I see no apps in front of me. I forward march. I don't see that problem. Forward march. I don't see that obstacle in life. Forward march. I don't see the hardships. Forward march I. I don't see that cancer or sickness. Forward on, I still march in spite of those situations. I began to look at this scripture that, uh, I mean, this chorus of a song that we've sung many times. Or maybe, maybe you haven't sung this one, but I, we have many times. Though sorrows befall us. And Satan oppose. God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer. Defeat all of our foes. God leads his dear children along. Because why? Some through the waters. Some through the flood. 
Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, God still gives a song. In the night season and all the the day long. I began to look at this. I found a song in the hymn book called It's Not. I began to, when I began to think about this sermon, it's not an easy road. That's the actual name of the hymn. I've never sung it before, but I began to read this chorus. It said, no, no, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's not an easy road. But Jesus walks with me and brightens the journey and lightens every heavy load. I'm here to tell you, church, and listen carefully, that God is still able to deliver us from the trials and the heartaches of this world. Faith sometimes need. listen, faith in God can change your outlook. Now life's obstacles may not be easy, but sometimes you have to got to get into life to just declare to the to the to the world, forward march I, I see no apps in front of me. Forward I march, I don't see no mountains. Forward march I, I don't see the problem, I don't see that obstacle. Forward march I, I don't see the hardship. Forward march, I don't see that You have to proclaim it within you. Faith can change your outlook in life. That's why why the famous hymn writer wrote, All the way my Savior leads me. What have I asked beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. I'm here to tell you tonight, God is able. You have to say, Lord, give me that mountain that you have for me. Faith can move mountains because faith can transform your outlook on life. And it doesn't matter what's on the horizon. Secondly, faith can move mountains because faith enlarges the possibilities of life. It's sometimes helpful to compare how one verse is translated or spoken in one gospel and how it's looked at in another. Sometimes Jesus says the same thing in a different way. In Luke's version today, text, Jesus said, if you had faith, the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The imagery here changes here a little. We began to see how faith can create new possibilities that did not exist before faith arrived in your life. Listen, faith enlarges the possibilities of life. Faith enlarges the options because faith brings God directly to bear in the situation you're holding and facing in your life today. And if I remember, if I remember my mathematics correctly, when you have an equation, you change one variable in the equation, you change the outcome of the equation. So when God is factored into your life's equation the outcome has got to change honey when you let God come completely inside of your life it will change every situation you face in life you want God's grace to move through your trials factor God into your life you want God's grace also to move into your life factor God's grace in your life. You want God's grace to move through any means necessary to bring about the end that God would have for you and your life. Factor God into every equation of your life. Faith is not about constricting the possibilities. Listen, faith in God enlarges the possibilities and creates new possibilities. A problem is only a problem in your life as long there is, there is no solution. But I know the solution solver. I know him by name. 
If there's even a hint of a possibility of a solution, you don't have the same problem. If you've got God in your life. And listen to me now. You say, Brother brother Gary, I asked God when I was seven years old back in 1937, whatever year you was born and saved. I'm here to tell you, you better factor God in the equation of your life today, today, today. Honey, this is a new day we're facing. You must keep God as a possibility in your life. God is the author a possibility. Before creation, there was nothing. But God authored a new possibility, and creation came into being. For the Israelites, there was no hope that they had in slavery. But God created a new possibility, and Pharaoh had to let God's people go. Jesus could have died on the cross but God created a new possibility and raised him to new life on the third day victory over death and hell and the grave aren't you glad he's still the God that can change things you must Lord I pray you give me this mountain we're facing today faith can move mountains because faith enlarges the possibilities of life. Listen, faith can move mountains because we are connected. We are connected to the creator of all the mountains by our faith. How you, listen, have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that our God is a mountain experience God? Listen to me. God does some of his best work on the mountaintop. Think about it. God does his best work on the mountaintop. It was on a mountaintop that Isaac was saved from sacrifice. It was on the mountaintop that Moses met God in the burning bush. Jesus was transfigured on a mountain and crucified on a mountain called Calvary. Yes, we serve a mountain God, El Shaddai, God of the mountain. He can make mountains and he can move mountains. And our faith connects us to our God of the mountains. Listen, I pray God, give me that mountain. When that happens, our lives become part of the greater whole and mountains have to move. The next time, the next time you face an impossible situation, maybe you're facing an impossible mountain in your life tonight, maybe an impossible mountain in your family, so to speak. Listen to me. The next time you face an impossible mountain, tell that mountain that the God of the mountain says to move. <laughs> tell it that you serve the God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Tell your mountain to get out of your way. Honey, nothing is impossible to God. Speak to your mountains. Listen, speak to your mountain, to this of loneliness that the God of comfort says to move out of my way. Speak to that mountain of frustrations that you face day by day and say the God of harmony says move out of my way. Speak to the mountain of turmoil and strife and trouble and heartache and says, listen, the God of this mountain says, peace be still in your life. Speak to your poor health, the problems you're facing in your life health-wise that the God of healing says to move out of my life. Speak to your mountain. Tell a mountain, get out of my way. Listen, Job faced a mountain. He lost everything. Can you just imagine? Lost everything. Boils, pain, sickness. He spoke, if God slay me. He said these words in spite of all the things as he was facing. He spoke, if God slay me, still 
I will trust him because he trusted in the God of the mountains. Listen, he spoke to the sickness. He spoke to the pain. He spoke to all the trouble he was facing because God is able to deliver me from anything that comes my way. Listen, you must speak to the mountains in your life. Whatever you've lost tonight, you must speak to that mountain. I claim it back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you lost your strength? Have you lost your strength to climb the mountain of, 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 of spirituality life because of the strife and heartaches with God? Listen, have you lost your home? Have you lost your wife? Have you lost a husband? Have you lost children? Have you lost peace in your life or in your home? Have you lost dignity in your life? Have you lost your job? Finances are in trouble? Listen, speak to the mountains that you're facing even tonight. I know I'm preaching to the church, but honey, I know everybody's facing a mountain of some sort in this life and in this world. Your health, speak to that mountain. Whatever I have to do, I'm going to climb that mountain with the power of God. Listen, we must understand. Get your soul right. Repent to climb up this mountain. Straighten up. Live right. Talk right. Look right. Do what's right. And then also spit right. <laughs> I heard someone say one time. Listen, Moses faced a mountain. He faced a mountain in his life. He led God's people, he led God's people to a dead sea, a red sea impossible, cannot cross. They can't do it. The enemy on the verge of destroying them. Listen, the world was coming at them. The children of God began to complain and whining and gossiping and backbiting. Moses stretched forth his rod and spoke to that mountain and that sea of water and he said split in the name of God Almighty. Listen, does it seem like you're at a dead end where it seems uncrossable? Speak to the situation in your life. Move, mountain, move. You can decide that you're going to serve God with everything within you. Face the difficulties of life. Yes, they're daily, every day. I remember Papa Johnson said it many times, life is just so daily. Well, honey, it's daily. But I also know this Word of God is daily also. You've got a daily Word for God in every situation you're facing in your life. Climb that mountain, so to speak, you're facing in your life. The woman with the issue of blood was facing a mountain. She tried all the doctors. She didn't know what to do. She spent all of her money. No insurance. No home health care. No Obamacare, Trump care, or Bush care. Nobody cares. No welfare. No answer. Crowd tried to stop her. Friends tried to stop her. Religious people tried to stop her. You ask, you ask, what did she say? What did she speak? No matter what I have to do, I'm getting to Jesus some way, somehow. I'm going to climb that mountain that's in my way. No matter what they think about me, I'm getting to Jesus some way. I'm going to speak to that mountain in front of me trying to keep me from Jesus. I'm going to speak to it. I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to get to him some way, somehow. I may be, uh, listen, I, I may be real stupid on my knees, crawling, begging. She began to press through the crowd, begging and weeping and crying out. But listen, I'm still going to go on through. Listen to me. The crowd was her mountain. The crowd was her mountain. Are you listening to the crowd around you? Are you listening to the cries of the world? Honey, focus and try your best. Get to Jesus some way, somehow. The people around her you know, were, were, cry, were crying all around her. Are you listening? Are you listening? And she kept on crying out to God. You have to decide to keep on climbing and keep on pressing through and keep on serving God and keep on being faithful. You must decide within your own spirit and God will help you all the way home. Listen, in this hour, honey, you're going to have to make a choice to press through all the situations in this world today. 
You had to press through some issues just to get to church tonight. I had to press through some issues just to get to church tonight. But I understand that I know But when I come into the house of the Lord, I can find peace and joy and restoration and joy and the Holy Ghost. I can find the answer when I press through all the things that the crowd is trying to stop you with in this world. When she got there, honey, the minute, the second she made it through that crowd, because she wasn't letting nothing stop her, I'm, we let everything under the sun stop us to get to Jesus. But she pressed through. The minute she touched the hem, of, uh, the hem of his garment, she was healed. She was saved. She was delivered. She was changed by the touch of the hem of his garment. There are some that say, listen, the preacher man I've heard people say, the preacher man can help me, and they get mad when he can't help them. The church will help me, and they quit because they don't get the right kind of help. The preacher can help me. The singer can help me get happy, and then when you leave, you get back sad again. The church is going to make me. Listen, the church can't save you. The church cannot deliver you. The church can't change you. The church can't help you. The church can't pay your bills. The church can't sober you up. The church can't change you. The church can't turn you around. Honey, you must speak to your mountain and you do the changing by praying out to God. Oh, God Almighty, change me into the child of God. Jesus can change you. Don't blame the church, honey. Blame the enemy of your soul. Get mad at the devil and press toward God. Listen, drug addict, alcoholic, abused. Oh, you say, oh, brother, girl, you preach it. Drug addict, alcoholic, abused, broken, that prostitute, the homosexual, the liar, the thief. You tell them, you tell them, you tell them. But I want to cry out tonight, what about those in that crowd, the doubter, the gossiper, the backbiter, the in and out Christian, the up and down Christian, the unfaithful Christian, the uncommitted. Honey, you must decide. Speak to the mountain that faces you and say, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to commit myself all the way to walk with Him in spirit and in truth. What I'm about to speak, listen, you ask, listen, I pray God help us. Bring us back to repentance. Bring us back to grace. Bring us back to mercy. Bring us back to the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. It's not in the name of the church or the name of anyone in this room. It's by the name of Jesus Christ that He can help you to climb the mountains you're facing in your life tonight. You must understand God is for you, not against you. Yet, there is a mountain that I discovered when I was a junior in high school. And I've been climbing that mountain ever since. That mountain of salvation. Listen, Psalm 121 says these words. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Honey, did you realize I just read Psalm 121? I'm here to tell you, God is for us. He'll help us to climb the mountains that we have to face in our world today. And honey, they're here and they're real, but God is able to help us through. Listen, David was a shepherd boy, just an ordinary looking kid, the medium build. Just did the usual things a boy would do. He skipped rocks across the ground. Then he killed a bear. Practiced his harp playing. And then killed a lion that tried to get to the lamb. 
He was out in the pasture throwing stones to run the animals away. Then he killed a giant named Goliath, just an ordinary type of kid. This young man had all kinds of difficulties and hardships like any other young man would. Yet still, he found time to worship God. It was up close to he was up close to nature when he wrote those words. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. My cup runneth over. Listen, wouldn't it be great if we could remain full and overflowing in this hour today? Honey, the enemy is out to steal and to kill your, your dedication, your devotion, your joy in serving God. With all the battles that David faced, the lions, the bears, yet he still wrote, my cup runneth over. Would to God that our cups would be so full to run over. Refresh us, O Lord. Refresh me, O Lord, in your word. Let my cup, O Lord, run over with peace and joy and love. Honey, you need to make the same prayer, Lord. Fill my cup. Let it run over with peace and joy and love. That even, even when we face the things the enemy puts in our path to stop us. Listen, the enemy wants to stop you and he'll put mountains in your way to try to keep you from God. He will try to stop you. He's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try and even make you want to give up on God. That's why, that's why, that's why we must say with David, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills, the mountains, where wherever cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. He is still God of the mountain, and we need to get there somehow. When you, when you begin to think and, to, and, and discuss of mountains, you think of stability, strength to stand. You think about something that's a mountain is powerful, strength to stand. Listen, we must stand against the, the works of the enemy. We must stand against persecution. We must stand with, by, against compromising. We must stand against the change of the world today that's leading us down a dark path. We must, we must stand against the troubles that's facing our world today. We must understand we must have strength to stand and strength to to endure. We must endure the hardships of life, the trials of life, the temptations of life. You must climb that mountain and say, Lord, give me this mountain. I want to be stable to stand and endure in these last days. We must have steadfastness to get to the mountain, firm in our belief. Honey, we believe in this book from front to back. We believe, I know we are symptoms of God, and we've got 16 fundamental truths. But, honey, I believe from cover to cover. I believe in this leather-bound cover that's covered it. Because why? It's protecting this Word of God. We need to protect the Word of God by getting it within our hearts and within our souls and within our minds. Sometimes people only open this book when they come to Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. Because why? They never get into it. Honey, listen, we must have this book. we got to climb this mountain of faithfulness to get into this book in these last troubled, difficult days. The hardships of life. Faith can move mountains because faith can transform it can transform your outlook on life and it doesn't matter what what all the situations and the problems you're facing and what lies on the horizon by faith you can trust God God does some of his greatest work on the mountaintop as I said it was on the mountaintop Isaac was saved from sacrifice listen he makes the mountains we serve a mountain God. He made the mountains and He can shake the mountains. He can move the mountains and He can help us to climb every mountain we face in our life. Now listen to me, church. If you serve God long enough, I've got to hurry. You're looking at the clock. If, 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 you, if you serve God long enough, if you serve God long enough, you're going to all climb that mountain called Mount Moriah. The mount of an unreasonable service. Abraham 
the father of faith. Twenty-five years waited for the promise of God. Abraham staggered not, but waxed strong in the Lord. After the promise came, God said, Go to Mount Moriah. Take your son and offer him as a sacrifice. You will not go far. Listen to me, church. You will not go far in your walk with God until you will come to a Mount Moriah. You will face what seems like unreasonable service. Yet, if you will go up and keep climbing, you will come down shouting. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God tested Abraham, and believe me, he's going to test you and I. We're going to face trouble. We're going to face difficulties. We're going to face trials that's unimaginable. I went to the hospitals today to see, see, see different ones, and I was uh, walking through the hospital, saw patient after patient, and people struggling, and, and, and you saw all kinds of things happening. I began to think, trouble, trouble, trouble. But we must keep climbing. Abraham, me and the boy, he said, me and the boy will go up yonder. You stay here. Sometimes... Abraham went by himself, taking his only son. He says, sometimes, listen to me, sometimes there'll be no church around when you need it. Sometimes there'll be no choir to sing you happy all the time. Sometimes there may not be no music that you want to hear. Maybe sometimes no friends to encourage you. Just me and the boy. Listen to me. Just bear commitment to God. Bear commitment to God. We're all going to face a Mount Moriah. The Mount of unreasonable service. Joseph, 13 years in a rat-infested dungeon, yet he climbed the mountain of unreasonable service and became prime minister. Job lost Everything unreasonable to think of. Yet he climbed the mountain and said, Though God slay me, I will trust him. Listen, you're not out of the will of God. Listen to me, church. Many people misinterpret. You're not out of the will of God if you face a mountain of tribulation. If you face a mountain of heartache. If you face a mountain of pain, if you face a mountain of trouble, actually, honey, you're right smack dab in the middle of God's will for your life. You think, I don't understand. Just roll up your sleeves, honey, and keep on fighting and keep on climbing that mountain. God, it will meet you on the top of that mountain. If you continue on with God, you will come. If you keep on. Climbing up and continue on through with God. You will come to another mountain, the Mount Sinai, the mountain of holiness. Let me shout it. <laughs> we were all sinners, but now wash. We were wretched. We were poor. We were hopeless. We were in darkness. We were lost. We were undone. We were miserable. Yet we cried out, Lord Save me. We must walk with God. He has rescued us from hell. Yet there are some thou shalt not in this book that we must understand. We need to know how we should live after our salvation with God. The book says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Climb that mountain. Seek out how God wants you to live. Climb up, for without holiness, no man shall see God. Listen to me, church. Listen, before you turn me off, holiness isn't bondage. It's freedom. Holiness isn't rules and regulation. It's a lifestyle, everyday lifestyle with God. Holiness is not 
To be feared is to be welcomed in your spiritual walk with God. We need to get back to say, Lord, how should I live to be holy in your presence? Moses was leading God's people, and right in the middle of the journey, they met the Amalekites, of all things, who resisted them by going through. I think I met a couple of those Amalekites last week. <laughs> Moses said, go this way, because God said to him. They replied, I don't care who told you to go. We're not going through. Moses told Joshua, Go get them. Tear into them. You fight them. We're going through no matter what. The battle was getting pretty rough when the Amalekites, when Moses decided, you fight. I'm going to Mount Rephidim, the mountain of intercessory prayer. They realized when Moses held his arms up, the battle would go their way. When he let them down, They would begin to lose. So Aaron, Aaron and her, and they held his hands up. Joshua won the battle. Weary saint of God, weary Christian, troubled Christian, weary saint, lift up your hands. God is on your side. Brokenhearted, listen, I know the weights are heavy, but lift those hands and praise Him. Worn out, saint of God, keep pressing forward. God's for you. Lift up those hands. Confused, saint of God, wondering what in the world's happening in our world today. Lift up your hands. Redemption draweth nigh. Listen, battered saint of God, you're battered and broken. Lift up those battered hands. Say, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Heartbreaking, troubled saint, tormented saint of God, lift up those hands in the hour we're living in. It's not the time to duck and run. Honey, it's the time to lift those hands and lift up the word of God and proclaim, we will climb this mountain. We're on to Today. We're going to make it to heaven one of these days. Keep climbing that mountain and don't ever, don't ever, don't ever get up. Huh, don't ever give up. Would you stand to your feet all across this building tonight?